हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम सतपाल वर्मा हियर फ्रॉम गवर्नमेंट नेशनल कॉलेज शिरसा आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर फिट एंड फाइन स्टेइंग होम एंड यू मस्ट बी स्टेइंग पॉजिटिव एंड टेस्टिंग योर सेल्फ नेगेटिव आई हैव ऑलरेडी डिलीवर्ड टू वीडियो लेक्चर्स ऑन पोइटिक फॉर्म्स एंड डिस्कस्ड four poetic forms namely sonnet lyric elegy and ode and in this video lecture today i am going to deliver or i am going to talk about remaining two poetic forms dramatic monologue and free verse so without wasting any time let's talk about dramatic monologue dramatic monologue is made of two words dramatic plus monologue dramatic means uh, it is related to drama and mono means single that is one and uh, log means speech so it is a dramatic speech but it is single if we go into its depth we shall uh, talk about its various features but before let us uh, define it a dramatic monologue is a type of lyric poem in which the speaker is directly addressing and talking to some other person so there is a speaker and he talks to some another person the speaker speaks alone in a one way conversation means like one way traffic hota hai jis tarah so he talks in a one way conversation and so it is called a monologue the speaker is found engaged in an emotional expression he is an emotional mood the situation or the setting is dramatic and that is why the poem is called a dramatic monologue i think everything is quite clear let's talk about its features jo iske features hain wo iski definition ke andar se hi hain you can see it's a type of lyric poem number 1 there is a single character or speaker who delivers a speech you can see these points uh, there is some of the points uh, in the slide as well the single speaker is patently not the poet speaker jo hai ye hai poet nahi hai keep in mind the speech is delivered or you can say the poem is uttered in a specific situation at a critical moment underline it the situation is you know specific there is a critical moment and then the speaker addresses and interacts with the silent listener or listeners means uh, interlocutor or you can say there can be a single listener or there can be more than one listener we come to know of the listeners or the auditors presence and reactions from the hints given by the speaker during the development of the poem or you can say during the course of the poem through his speech the speaker reveals his own temperament and character keep in mind it means he uh, reveals himself it means there is there is self revelation and that is the hallmark hallmark of a dramatic monologue so i think uh, almost all the points are clear and when you are trying to understand a dramatic monologue you should ask yourself these questions what are the question what is the situation the situation should be dramatic who is the speaker talking to who is the speaker who is talking to naturally there is a single speaker who is talking to himself uh, loudly and there are silent listeners as well is there any silent listener ask yourself while uh, you know um, reading the dramatic monologue what tactics what kind of techniques what kind of methods is the speaker using to make his point to make his case to plead his case and last but not least is what do you think about the character of the speaker character of the speaker 
so these are the question if these questions are answered honestly and sincerely everything will become clear regarding dramatic monologue now let's talk about famous dramatic monologues my last duchess dear friends this poem has been prescribed for your study in ba third semester andrea del sarto bishop orders his tomb first three poems have been written by robert browning who is credited to have perfected dramatic monologue this poetic form means this poetic form has been perfected by robert browning ulysses it has been written by alfred tennyson and the last one is the love song of j alfred prufrock it has been written by william shakespeare so these are the famous examples and if we talk about uh, your uh, examples first uh, see in this slide it is the picture of my last duchess this poem has been prescribed for your study and uh, if we talk about notable poets who wrote dramatic monologues so we have robert browning its picture is also available then we have robert frost it is american poet ezra pound also american poet and then we have t s eliot it is a notable you know uh, english poet is very famous so uh, uh, other uh, poets uh, uh, jinhone dramatic monologue likha hai you can uh, name them as robert lowell also so we have robert browning t s eliot robert frost ezra pound robert lowell all these poets are very notable and they have written dramatic monologue in a effective manner so in the uh, next uh, point we shall discuss uh, dramatic lyric versus dramatic monologue since while uh, studying uh, dramatic monologue you will come across uh, this confusion that that uh, sir what is the basic difference between dramatic lyric and dramatic monologue since these two terms um, seem similar to each other so let's talk about it dramatic lyric is also a monologue and keep in mind dramatic monologue uh, is also a monologue it is uttered in an identifiable situation at a dramatic moment we are talking about dramatic lyric here keep in mind in it the focus of interest is on the speaker's elaborate argument i repeat it the focus of interest in a dramatic lyric is on the speaker's elaborate argument it means in a dramatic uh, lyric there is argumentation and the focus of interest or you can say the writer stresses on the elaborate argument and uh, dear friends this is the basic difference since in a dramatic monologue the focus of interest is on the character revealed in the course of arguing or in the course of study in the course of the development of the of the poem so this is the basic difference and if you talk about examples of uh, dramatic uh, lyric you can talk about johan dunn's the canonization and the flea in these two poems in these two dramatic lyrics rather i should say the focus of interest is on argumentation if you have studied these poems or if uh, by chance uh, uh, you know if your area of interest is in uh, study of english literature and while pursuing your post graduation you will surely uh, surprised by the argumentation of john dunn so it's a different thing and uh, you will surely come across you can study these poems as well next is william wordsworth tintern abbey william wordsworth tintern abbey is spoken by one person to a silent auditor who is a silent auditor dorothy that is sister of william wordsworth in a specific situation at a significant moment in his life but it is not a dramatic monologue underline dear friends it is not a dramatic monologue 
बिकॉज देर आर टू रीजन वी आर इन्वाइटेड टू आइडेंटिफाई द स्पीकर विद द पोइट हिमसेल्फ आई रिपीट इट वी आर इन्वाइटेड टू आइडेंटिफाई द स्पीकर विद द पोइट हिमसेल्फ एंड इफ यू रिमेंबर वाइल डिस्कसिंग वेरियस फीचर्स ऑफ ड्रामेटिक मोनोलॉग वी हैव एक्सप्लेन दैट द स्पीकर इज पेटेंटली नॉट द पोइट आई रिपीट द लाइन द स्पीकर इज पेटेंटली नॉट द पोइट सो इन ए ड्रामेटिक मोनोलॉग द स्पीकर कैन नॉट बी द पोइट एंड द सेकेंड पॉइंट इज द फोकस ऑफ इंटरेस्ट इन द टिंटन एबे इज नॉट द रिविलेशन ऑफ द स्पीकर टेम्परामेंट सो मच एज द इवोल्यूशन इवोल्यूशन मीन्स डिवेलपमेंट ऑफ द स्पीकर ऑब्जर्वेशन मेमरीज एंड थॉट towards the resolution of an emotional problem i am repeating it uh, dear friends that the focus of interest in the tintern abbe is not uh, the revelation of the speaker's temperament but what is uh, the focus of interest focus of interest is the evolution that is the development of the speaker's observation his memories and his thought what he thinks towards the resolution of an emotional so dear friends let's talk about uh, your uh, we have already discussed uh, your uh, um, dramatic uh, lyrics so dear students last but not the least is uh, some of the terms which are associated with the dramatic monologue and uh, you may get confused sometime so you must know while reading or understanding the dramatic monologue first of all is monologue it is a lengthy speech by a single person it is a lengthy speech by a single person and next is soliloquy what is soliloquy when a character utters a monologue in a play he expresses his or her private thought and it is called a soliloquy so i think uh, everything has become clear to you about dramatic monologue and now let's move towards free verse that is in our uh, next topic of discussion free verse so the question arises what do you and what do we mean by free verse free verse is also known as an open form of poetry it is also known as verse libre it is a french term dear uh, friends free verse is a literal translation of the french word term verse libre it was a movement that originated in france in the 1880s however free verse became current in english in the early 20th century so i think uh, everything has become clear and now we shall talk about its various feature which you can see in the slide as well it does not have a regular meter or line length it has no regular meter meter means uh, recurrent units of weak and strong stressed syllables stressed syllables so it is without regular meter and regular line length it does not follow a proper rhyme scheme it does not have any set rules it is thus free from the limitations of regular meter rhythm and proper rhyme scheme even then it provides artistic expression means it fulfills its aim its goal its work its objective the poet is thus free to give his own shape to a poem the poet is free to give the shape of his choice to the poem so these are the point and it follows the rhythm of natural speech these are the some of the points are you know different some are related to the freedom and these are 
another points which are associated with the free verse you can uh, uh, you know divide them into two points it, like you can see i am you know moving this slide let us you can look into the uh, these points in a depth manner these are the points literal translation free verse and open form no regular uh, neutral no regular line length no rhyme or fixed line and these are another points so it follows the rhythm of natural speech it's it, it is not that it is without rhyme its rhyme are based on sounds words phrases sentences and paragraphs therefore free verse eliminates much of the artificiality of poetic expression underline it it eliminates much of the artificiality of poetic expression the and the term is loosely applied to the poetry of matthew arnold to the poetry of matthew arnold william black and walt whitman who experimented with departures from regular meter dear friends in 1855 walt whitman startled the literary world with the leaves of grass by using verse lines of varying length he created rhythmic effects by rise and fall of voice in speech it is called cadenced units and repetition balance variation of words phrases clauses and lines so it was you know starting of uh, of free verse in uh, america and it was walt whitman you, you should remember uh, some of these points as far as remarkable poets of uh, free verse are concerned you can see on the in the slide as well so remarkable poets such as william carlos williams t s eliot ezra pound have written their lyric poetry in free verse and as far as famous examples of uh, free verse in literature you can read the poem leaves of grass and another poem we have a noiseless patient spider written by walt whitman who is also famous as the father of father of free verse english poetry his image is also available you can see it in the slide and uh, you can also read the poem come slowly come slowly eden written by emily dickinson and who is famous as the mother of american english free verse and most of the verse in english that is published today is non metrical and non metrical here i mean that is free verse so dear students that's all about uh, you know free verse and uh, it is a very uh, um, free style poetry you have to worry nothing nothing about uh, you know meter nothing about uh, rhythm nothing about choice of words uh, and nothing about your rhyme scheme you are free to use any rhythm any you know rhyme scheme and uh, you need not uh, worry about uh, you know the kind of shape that you give to your poems so, and uh, it is very famous today and uh, so i uh, exhort you i suggest to you to go through the poems that are prescribed in your syllabus and identify to which poetic term they belong since we have discussed almost three poetic forms so far so you can go through these uh, you know poetic forms uh, um, identifying and uh, in the next lecture we shall talk about how to identify different poetic forms while studying different points so tomorrow's lecture that is my next lecture is very important it will uh, you know uh, have um, practical aspect we shall be more practical instead of theoretical uh, and uh, you must uh, uh, you know 
watch uh, these lectures very carefully so that you can have a good idea so that's all dear friends thank you for watching my video stay positive test negative thank you